Hello, everyone. It's Friday. That means it's time for Friday Sews. I'm sharing a small fabric haul, sharing what I finished sewing last week, and let's talk about those new Butterick spring patterns. I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel, a channel all about sewing. Last week, I received a very small fabric order from Super Textiles, which is located on Etsy. I ordered three pieces. The first one is two yards of this. Put your sunglasses on. I should have warned you. Incredibly bright pink. Uh, it's, it's described as a scuba and it's actually suitable for athletic wear. I was going to make leggings and now I think that might be a little bit too bright for leggings. But what I could do is make either a zip up vest or a zip up jacket because I do find that I wear a vest or jacket when it's a little bit chilly out and I walk the dog. So that will work for this. And bonus, it'll work great when the sun starts to set because this will be so bright that people will see me. I always got to look on the bright side. Okay, the next piece of fabric I got is this wonderfully, I want to be careful with it. It's a mesh, it's sheer, it's a knit, and it has these fabulous little leather circles sewn on it. Here, I'm coming forward. Can you see? Now, I ordered this piece thinking that it could be kind of fun to sew that Gothenburg top out of a sheer and layer it over cami. However, I'm not positive if that will work because of the way the collar is sewn, that facing would show. I'm not sure if I would like that or not. So I'm still thinking that I may do some type of a loose fitting pullover type top to wear over a cami. I'm gonna go through my Berta Style magazines and see if I can find something that would be appropriate. I have quite a bit to work with. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? I love fabric that just has a little bit of texture and something a little bit different to it. Last piece I ordered, how gorgeous is this? This is going to be a summer dress. There is, let's see, it's a cotton with probably a little bit of lycra in it. It's got a little bit of a stretch, beautiful hand, like a cotton sateen. I wish you could feel it. Beautiful hand, beautiful print, fabulous weight. I don't know what summer dress I'm going to sew yet, but it is going to be a summer dress. I want something that, thinking maybe like a fit and flare. I just picture this being a little more fitted through the top, flared out on the bottom. Maybe that Butterick pattern that I reviewed last year. I sewed that in a beautiful floral stretch print. This fabric could work very well in that dress. I did a review on it. I'll link that video above if you haven't seen that review. Otherwise, if you've got a suggestion, if you're looking at this thinking, oh, that would be great in the blah, 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 fill in the blank dress, leave it in the comments below for me. I am so happy to say that I did have time to sew last week. I don't know about you, but I really like to have that time in my sewing room, just being creative. It just calms me down when things feel chaotic and things have been a little chaotic in our personal life at the moment. Sewing is such therapy for me. How about you? I did not do a lot of sewing, but what I did do, this is a second version of the Itch to Stitch Gothenburg top that was released earlier this week. I have an entire pattern review video of this top. I'll link that above if you did not have a chance to see that yet which I talk about my first version, which is a beautiful red wool blend that is more structured. And this one I sewed over the weekend, knowing that she was going to release the pattern because I wanted to see what it looked like in a fabric that was not recommended. This is a French terry, it's got a softer look. I wear this one around the house a lot with a pair of yoga pants or leggings. Next up, I did finish Let's see, Simplicity 6368. This is a vintage Simplicity pattern that I was sewing for my father. I had cut this out and started sewing it last year because the facing technique where you finish the facing and the interfacing all in one step for a really nice clean finish. I did a video tutorial on that. I'll link that above if you have not seen that or you're not familiar with that technique. Well, I had completed that tutorial video and then tucked this away 
with the intention of completing it. And now here I am more than a year later, finally completing it. Talked about it in last Friday's so video. I just need to add buttons and buttonholes and look at, there's the pocket. Was that a pretty good match or what? Let me show you how I did that. So let me know in the comments, is that how you do pattern matching? You will notice, yes indeed, I did not match across the front of the top. Number one, my father is not going to care. He's going to love this. He has loved everything that I've ever sewn for him. Did I ever share with you that when I was 14, I sewed him a polyester leisure suit? I knew nothing about sewing men's clothing. I knew nothing about tailoring. I don't even remember if this leisure suit had any tailoring. I do remember that my father wore it proudly. He wore it to work. I wish there was photos. We just didn't take photos back then. Anyway, my father's not gonna care. He's gonna love this. And there wasn't enough fabric to match the front. I do recall that when I was cutting this out, but we're almost done and I'm going to ship it off to him tomorrow. And I hope I can convince him to take a photo and send it to me and let me share it with all of you. The last item I finished sewing was this vintage 2058. This is a Scott Berry design from 1980. This was one I was going to try and get done in February for the Black History Month Pattern Designers Challenge that was on Instagram. I wasn't able to get it done and I think I have shared this with you before. I don't like to put self-imposed deadlines on myself. I knew I wasn't going to complete it in time for the challenge and rather than stress out about it and stay up late and try and finish it and not spend time with my husband, I just said it's really not that important. It's just a dress, it's just a sewing challenge. And I finished it early in the week. I finished it in March. I've already shared a photo on Instagram. It's technically a March make, so I'm debating if I'm going to share it in my February makes or my March makes. I kind of want to share it in February because I really want you to see it. If you recall, I was going to use a bright, bold, almost a tropical print with pinks and whites and turquoise. I changed my mind. As I pulled that fabric out and I felt it and I was looking at the pattern pieces, I realized that even though it was fairly lightweight, it was going to be too heavy for this design. Instead, I sewed the dress out of a rayon knit. What's the, yeah, I put a tag in there. Do you see that? I put a tag in there so that I could tell the front from the back. How cool is that? Now this really looks like nothing, right? It just looks like a big old moo moo. And this sucker's huge. It's so big. Um, the pattern was a size 16, which I knew was going to be too large for me. Anyway, I typically start with a 12 or a 14. A 14 if it's a more structured garment, a 12 if it's more loose fitting. So I did not, I know there's ways of taking a pattern and grading it to the right size. And I didn't do that. All I did is I just took the pattern piece. I folded it and pinned it and took out probably, what is that, about two inches? Took out about two inches in the width on the front and the back piece. I also, y'all look at how long the sleeve is. Can you see that? Can you see that? I took almost six inches out of the length of the sleeve. Now, you can, you can see from this pattern that sleeve is meant to be very long and worn, pushed up. 
I did find when I put this on to do photos and video that using that self belt, I had to keep fussing with the dress to get it to drape and blue on over to give that look I was going for. After taking photos, I brought it back into my sewing room and I was going to add a casing inside and put elastic in there so that it would always stay blue on. However, before I did that, I tried it on with a thick black belt and I really like that look. And I don't wanna add the elastic now because with the wider belt, it doesn't need as much to come over and blue on for the look that I'm going for. What I'm going to do instead, I'm gonna take that self belt, I think I'm gonna chop it off probably about this much and add elastic to the back. Now we're gonna see that because it's gonna blouse over that. I'm hoping Doing that will give that belt a tighter fit, but still give the illusion of a tie belt with the blue, soft blue sun that I thought was really beautiful. I do want to find a solution because I could see myself wearing this this summer off the shoulder because I really liked that look. Those were the three things that I sewed this week. Now, the reason I was able to add that Vogue American Designer Pattern Original Label into my Vintage Vogue design is because I have a little collection of these labels. Whenever I had purchased a vintage pattern over the years, I would always check to see if there was a label included. Some labels were still in the pattern envelope, sometimes they weren't. And then also probably 20 years ago, I purchased a lot of vintage Vogue sewing pattern labels. You can see them right here. And I just keep them hanging on at my bulletin board. And, and when I do so, an old vintage Vogue pattern, I pull them out and add a label. Hey, did you notice that Butterick released their new spring patterns the other day? They sure did. There are 14 new patterns. When I first looked at this release that Butterick put out, I wasn't real thrilled with it. They, based on the styling and the fabrics and the models that they chose for this release, my guess is that they have decided the demographic for the Butterick brand is someone that is older. Now, I'm probably in their demographic, and I actually would probably sew some of the spring releases from the McCall's pattern line, which is geared towards a younger person. That being said, when you look at this release, try to look past the fabric choices and the styling. And also keep in mind, some of the sample garments don't fit the models the best. And, and that just happens when you sew a sample garment, it, you don't necessarily always know who's going to model it for you. So look past that. Look at the line drawings. Think about fabric that you have in your stash that might work for it. I do think there are some designs in this release that are winners. Of course, we all have different opinions and there's something for everybody. Let's have a look. 6804 is a high waist dress with pleats at the front neck. Dress A has a slim skirt and short sleeves. Dress B has a flared skirt and long sleeves. This comes in sizes 8 through 26 and it has multi cup sizes A, B, C, and D. Fabric suggestions are cotton blends, crepe, linen, and ponte, and it is rated easy. I think that sleeve on the short sleeve is a very on-trend look, and I think the pleating at the neckline is quite beautiful. 6809 is a dress that has a button front bodice with a side zipper, a sweetheart neckline. It's sleeveless or short sleeves. It has a straight or full skirt, a sash, and a belt. This is in available in sizes 6 through 22. It's rated easy. And this also has multi-cup sizes A, B through A, double D. Fabric suggestions are cotton blends, linen, poplin, and crepe. I think this is a cute little summer dress. And again, I'm really liking the sleeves on that sleeved version. 6807 is a high waist v-neck dress in two lengths with drawstring, ruched skirt, and sleeve variations. This is available in sizes 8 through 26. Fabric suggestions are double georgette, satin, crepe, or silk. This is rated average. It also calls for lining, but I can't tell that it's a lined dress. I'm guessing the bodice is lined because there's not a lot of lining called for. And I think I'm not so sure they need the ruching on this. I think it's a beautiful silhouette without that. 6805 is a fit and flare high waist dress with princess seams and sleeve variations. It's rated easy and comes in sizes six through 24. 
fabric suggestions are ponte, crepe, chalet, and linen. So with the princess seams and then the shaping under the bust, you could do a full bust adjustment. And I do like the little color blocking options. I think that is a very flattering silhouette and the fit and flare, I think flatters most everybody. I like the little sleeve detail also. 6806 is a v-neck dress with elastic waist, sleeve, and skirt variations. This is rated easy and it comes in sizes 8 through 16 and 18W through 24W. Fabric suggestions are chalet, crepe, cotton blend, and peach skin. This looks like a really simple to sew, but really cute little dress. Appears to be a pullover dress. And I think with your right fabrics, you could really make this a wow piece. I love both of the hemlines, the double flounce, as well as the shirt tail hem. 6814 is a pullover top that has a ruffle neckline and sleeve variations. This comes in sizes 8 through 16 and 18W to 24W and is rated easy. Fabric suggestions are chalet, crepe de chine, double georgette, and satin. Now, I like this little top pattern. I like that it has darts. That's always a good thing for shaping. You can add elastic at the waistline or not. That way you can emphasize your waist or not, whatever you prefer. That ruffle around the neckline is just very soft. It draws attention to your face. It's also quite current and on trend. And then your sleeve variations, no matter what length you like, you've got the option there. You can add a ruffle, you can add a flounce. You could even leave it off if you wanted to. This is a great basic pattern that I think you could do quite a bit with this one. 6814 is a pullover top that has a knot front, back keyhole neck closing, and sleeve tie and neckline variations. This is rated easy, comes in sizes 6 through 24, with fabric suggestions of chalet, crepe de chine, charmeuse, double georgette, and crepe. Now, without looking at the pattern piece, I'm not sure how easy this would be to do a full bust adjustment. I can't really tell if it's designed to be fitted or not. I also think that keyhole neckline on the top that has that little slit in the front, you could probably eliminate that because you could probably get it on and off. I do like the sleeve variations. I love the little pleats at the bottom of the long one. I like the ruffles. I think, again, that little detail, that knot front, I like the detail. This is a maybe for me. 6817 is a knit pullover top with overlays and sleeve variations. This is designed by Katherine Tilton. It comes in sizes extra small to XXL, is rated average, and calls for knits that have a 35% stretch like a cotton knit or jersey interlock or rayon. There appears to be hand stitching along the seams on that orange and pink one, although the back under notions, under yardage, doesn't call for anything. So I don't know if it's like an embroidery floss thread that they've used. It's kind of a cool little detail though it really highlights the seaming. 6816 is a button front top with a band collar and sleeve variations. This is available in sizes 6 through 22 and is rated easy. Fabric suggestions are cotton blends, broadcloth, lightweight linen, crepe de chine, and crepe. Now, I really like the style of this. There's darts which give you a nice fitted look and are also make it easier for you to adjust the pattern to fit your personal body. I think that V-neck in the front on a button front is very flattering. It draws attention up towards your face and the sleeve variations. Well, I'm all about the statement sleeves. I think they are fabulous. They're still current and in fashion. It's just a great way to add a little bit extra to a button front shirt. The 12 is a pullover top with a V neckline with a yoke and it has neck sleeve and hem variations. This is rated easy, comes in sizes 8 through 26 with fabric suggestions of cotton blends, crepe de chine, georgette, chalet, and charmeuse. And this is a beautiful little top. Again, that V neckline with those little bands, it brings attention to your face, uh, the sleeve variations, Something for everyone there. You can go short, you could go long. The little curved hem, that's always a flattering length with a slight little dip in the front. And think about color blocking on this one. How beautiful would that band be color blocked or with embroidery on it? 6818 is a skirt with a side zipper and asymmetrical seams. View A has a high-low skirt, and View B has a long flared skirt. It's available in sizes 6 through 24 and is rated average. 
Fabric suggestions are crepe, chalet, rayon, satin, and jersey. I think it's a beautiful skirt. It's pretty basic, and if you've been sewing for any amount of time, you probably have a pattern similar to this already in your stash. 6821 is a jacket with peplin in two lengths and a straight skirt in two lengths. It comes to sizes 8 to 16 and 18W to 32W, and it is unlined. One of the jackets has a contrast front band, and one of them has a flounce at the bottom of the sleeves. Fabrics are crepe, gabardine, cotton blends, and linen, and this is rated average. 6822 is a short jacket with a back pleat, high waist dress, and top. This is available in women's sizes 18W to 32W, and it has multi cup sizes also, up to an H cup. Fabrics are linen, crepe, cotton blends, and shintong. And I think this is a really nice design. I like how the dress and the top have darts for shaping. It gives a nice slimming effect, skims the body. And I love that little pleat in the back with the contrast fabric, as well as that contrast front collar that brings your attention up to your face, which I always think is flattering on anybody. 6820 is a pattern for a wrap jacket with an asymmetrical hem skirt and pants. It's rated easy and it comes in sizes 6 through 22 and is suitable for crepe, cotton blends, linen, and silk. Not all of us are wearing suits at the moment, but I do think this is a flattering one with that wrap front. The little pleats around the waistline help disguise a little bit of a tummy. And if you need a suit for work or for church, this could be a good option. This is an unlined jacket. So what do you think about the new patterns? Do you have a favorite? Is there one that you just have to have? Would love to hear about it. Leave it in the comments below. I want to share with you something that I saw on Instagram this week. Mari with Mari Sews sewed up the call 7985 and blew me away with how fabulous it looked. Uh, she's given me permission to share this with you. And she also did a review on her YouTube channel. I will link that in the description below. Go check it out. What I love about her top is I would never have looked at this pattern. I didn't think it would be flattering at all. And she proves me wrong. This might be a pattern that I do purchase. I just really like the look and I think I could pull it off also. She's curvier like I am. And I love finding inspiration from others that have similar body shapes to know what might work on me and something that I might be comfortable wearing. I don't even know what's on my sewing agenda for the upcoming week, so I have nothing to share with you yet. Keep an eye out for my February makes video, which will be posted very soon. That's where you get to see everything I sewed in February with me modeling it so you can get a better look at what it looks like with movement. Oh, look. I was doing a little movement for you. <laughs> if you enjoyed this Friday Sews, you might like some of my other Friday Sews. I'll link that playlist above and go check that out. You know I appreciate a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be aware when I post a new video. Until next time, happy sewing. So what might 